Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm taking you through my top six garage gym essentials. These are in no particular order, just the top six pieces of equipment that I personally need to have in my garage gym. I'm gonna walk you through each piece of equipment, break down why it's important to me and which brands I use. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, barbells and plates. I'm gonna count this as one piece of equipment. I'll talk about the barbells first, then I'll show you guys the plates. So I have quite a few barbells. I have the safety squat bar from Rep Fitness the Olympic bar from Rep Fitness, the Cambridge Swiss bar from Rep, and then an easy curl bar from Rep. So you guys are gonna see a lot of Rep Fitness in this video. So when I was designing my garage gym, I did not wanna spend a ton, a ton of money. I also didn't wanna spend too little and get shitty equipment. I wanted to find brands and companies that were kind of right in the middle, higher quality, but weren't too crazy expensive. So I went with Rep Fitness with a lot of the gear and equipment you guys are gonna see in this video. So safety squat bar, love this bar, utilize it every single week. I use all these barbells every single week. If you're just starting out with a garage gym, you don't need all these bars, obviously. If you're just starting out though, you absolutely are gonna need the Olympic, the straight Olympic bar, so make sure you guys are getting one of those. But safety squat bar, I use this a lot, squats, lunges, and even calf raises, so I don't have to hold weights in my hands and balance. This allows me to put the weight on my back and really isolate the calves. Olympic bar, obviously bench pressing stuff all other exercises as well. The Cambridge Swiss bar I use probably the most, I think, week to week. A lot of bench pressing, multi-grip, much easier on the shoulders and on the wrist. And then the easy curl bar, great for skull crushers and bicep curls. And for my plates, I went with the Rep Fitness Competition Bumper Plates. So I went with 340 pounds with this set. I really like the higher end competition bumpers. I also really like the multicolor, looks sick aesthetically in the gym. I also have some change plates, some older beat up plates if I ever want to go heavier. But 340 pounds is really all I personally need at this point in my training. I'm no longer maxing out on weight, lifting 500 plus pounds. So 340 is more than enough for me personally to still get great results in the gym. Number two, we have the squat rack. So I went with the Rep Fitness PR4000. I started off originally in my first garage gym setup with I think the 1000 or the 1100, so much thinner steel. Still a decent squat rack, but this thing is beastly. This thing's gonna last me for the rest of my life for sure. So thick steel, so many different attachments. So it's super versatile. That's another reason why I bought this rack. There's so many things I can add to it if I want to in the future, if I move to a different house things of that nature. Also a big selling point for me was the pull-up bar. So the ceilings in my garage gym are super short, so I can't fully extend my arms up. So I couldn't have this pull-up bar flipped up and around where I can dead hang underneath the bar without having my feet touch the ground. So again, major selling point I was able to flip it upside down so I could still do pull-ups down here because I do a lot of pull-ups in my training. So super versatile, highly suggest this squat rack. You obviously don't need to get something this beastly and this expensive when you first start out. However, like I said in the beginning of this video, be very careful you know, getting that $200 squat rack off of Amazon because that thing's gonna be a piece of shit and it's probably not gonna last you too long. Again, you spend the money now, this thing's gonna last a lifetime. Number three, we have the workout bench. Super important part of any garage gym. This is an incline decline bench. This is the Rep Fitness AB5000. I highly suggest going with an incline decline bench. It's much more expensive than a flat bench, but I assure you there's so much more versatility. It is absolutely worth spending that money up front, especially when you get a good bench. It's gonna last you a really, really long time. So love this bench. The only downside to this bench is that it is so heavy. So it's a downside, it's also a positive. It is built like a tank. This thing is so heavy, you almost need to warm up before moving this thing around the gym. It's kind of ridiculous. But it's, again, it's also a positive. Incline, decline. It's also a zero gap bench. So if you do not like gaps when doing bench press and stuff like that, you can close up that gap with a zero gap. There's a leg roll attachment that comes with it. Expensive, not crazy expensive. But again, 
definitely worth it to spend that money and get the incline decline bench. Number four, we have dumbbells. Every garage gym needs some dumbbells. You don't necessarily need from five to 100 pounds, but you do need some dumbbells to really maximize your training, in my opinion. If you're just starting out, I highly suggest getting, at the very least, a pair of light, a pair of medium, and a pair of heavy dumbbells to really maximize your training. So I went with the Stealth Black rubber handled dumbbells from Rep Fitness. Went from five to 75 pounds. I went with these specifically because I live in New York, so it gets really humid in the summer. I didn't want to go with steel handled dumbbells and have them rust out, so I went with the rubber handles. Such a great investment. Love these dumbbells. They're going to last me so long. So five to 75 pounds. Then I have some heavier pairs. So I have one pair of 80s from actually Rogue Fitness, steel handled, and there's literally no rust on them. So it goes to show, sometimes you spend more money, you get a better product. Then I have a pair of 90s and a pair of 100s from Rep Fitness, steel handle. There is some rust on them, but it's really not too bad. So yeah, highly suggest these rubber handle dumbbells if you're in a humid climate, they're awesome. And again, remember, you don't need from five to 100, definitely light, medium and heavier pair to really maximize your training. Number five, we have kettlebells. So every garage gym needs some kettlebells. You guys obviously do not need 100 pairs of kettlebells like I have here. So like dumbbells, you should have at the very least a pair of light, medium, and heavy to get the most out of your kettlebell training. So starting at the very, very end, so I have two pairs from Kettlebell Kings. So higher end, more expensive. They are, they're very nice. So a pair of 106 pounders at the very end then a pair of 88 pounders, again, from Kettlebell Kings, and then everything else is from Rep Fitness. So still good quality, but these tend to rust more, so obviously you spend more money, you're gonna get a little bit more higher quality, but you don't necessarily need it. So the Rep Fitness kettlebells are just fine. So I have a pair of 71, 63, 53, 53 pounders, actually from Rogue Fitness, so I forgot about those. And then a pair of 45s, 35s, 27s, and then 15s, behind me. So everything I could possibly need when it comes to kettlebells and the weights that I can use. So absolutely, definitely get some kettlebells if you're starting up a garage gym. And here we are at number six. Every garage gym needs a piece of cardio equipment. So my go-to piece of cardio equipment is the Rogue Echo Bike. It's an expensive piece of equipment, but it is definitely worth the investment. This is my most utilized piece of equipment out of everything in my garage gym. So I use this for warm-ups, conditioning, and cool downs. Absolutely love the Echo Bike. Super high quality, so you're paying a lot of money up front, but this thing is built to last. This thing is built like a tank. A little bit of a pain in the ass to put together, but once you do, all there really is to do is just maintain it by tightening some bolts every now and then. This thing has withstood the elements down here, so really, really cold, really, really hot, and it still feels like it's brand new. So definitely worth the investment. Obviously, you don't have to get an Echo Bike. There are other bikes out there. I've tried Assault Bikes. I personally like the Echo Bike the best. Um, I've also had rowers. I've had ski ergs. I really like rowers, especially for like being the most efficient in improving conditioning and cardio. I find that the Echo Bike and rowers are the best two pieces of equipment. There are ski ergs out there. I personally don't like ski ergs. I don't feel like they're that beneficial. So rowers and Echo Bikes, but the Echo Bike is absolutely probably my favorite piece of equipment. If you don't have the money for something like this, start with a jump rope. Just get something so you have some sort of piece of cardio equipment in the garage gym. Yeah. 